Good afternoon, this is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding, here to discuss the basics of foreign account reporting, five important tips to help you get the job done. So generally, the way the U.S. works is like this. U.S. persons, which is U.S. citizens, legal permanent residents, and foreign nationals who meet substantial presence, I'm just focusing on individuals here. Uh, if you fall into one of those categories, you're considered what's called a U.S. person. As a U.S. person, you're required to report uh, your worldwide income as well as disclose foreign accounts, assets, and investments on various different international information reporting forms, depending on the category of the asset and, and the total value amount, and sometimes based on your on your filing status. Are you single, married, filing joint? Do you live in the U.S. or are you considered a foreign resident? Uh, some of the common types of forms are the FBAR form, Bank and Financial Account Reporting, FinCEN Form 114. This one's not even a tax form. Uh, this is a form that the IRS enforces, but it's technically a FinCEN form. FinCEN is the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. Usually, most of the time, it has nothing to do with crimes. FATCA Form 8938 is uh, the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, and people who have to file tax returns have to include a Form 8938 to report their specified foreign financial assets, depending on various issues such as um, what the threshold is for people living in the U.S. versus living outside of the U.S., and their filing status. Some of the less common, more intricate forms is the Form 8621 that's used to report passive foreign investment companies, PFICs. Any year that there's an excess distribution, it's, it's a brutal tax calculation. And then there's you know some other forms as well, not necessarily for accounts per se, but more like assets and trusts, 3520, 3520A, 5471, et cetera, et cetera. So going through what some of the tips are, five important tips I'm going to go through with you when it comes to reporting. Okay, First one, the due dates vary. Not all reporting is due on the same day. For example, the FBAR is due April 15th, but it's on automatic extension. That means you get until October to file it, whether or not you file an extension form. Okay, The Form 8938, for example, is part of your U.S. tax return. It is required to be filed when your tax return is filed, but there's no automatic extension. In other words, you have to file an extension to do your tax return um, in order to get an extension to file the Form um, 8938. Other forms uh, have different due dates as well, but they're not really for an account per se. Your foreign trust reporting under 3520A as an Apple is normally due three months and 15 days, normally March, March 15th. Um, two months and 15 days, I apologize. That's the first tip, right? The second tip is some people will have to file the forms even if taxes aren't due, okay? FBAR is a perfect example. FBAR is not even a tax form, right? So you may literally have no tax consequence in the current year, but if you have foreign accounts, foreign financial accounts, and they exceed the threshold for filing, then you still have to file the form even though there's no tax consequence. So that's something important to keep in mind. Some people think, hey, I don't have to file a tax return, so there's nothing else I have to do. Uh, the IRS, unfortunately, doesn't see it that way. Three, you may have to file the same, uh, multiple forms for the same account, right? So a common one is the FBAR and the 8938. There's a lot of overlap, uh, foreign pension, for example, reported on both. Some people think, hey, I filed the, the form uh, 8938, or I filed the FBAR, I don't have to file the other form again to report that account, asset, or investment. That's incorrect. You may have to file the same form, uh, sorry, you may have to file different forms for the same account, same asset. This is a super important one. Number four is due diligence versus perfection. Okay, I can't tell you the number of times I hear, I knew I had to file the FBAR, I didn't file it. Why? I didn't have all the account information. Well, then you're knowingly filing it late, and that could become a willfulness issue, reckless disregard, right? Lower standards to prove willfulness. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to use your due diligence to get the information that you can. If you have, you know you have 10 accounts, you got information for eight of them. For two of them, you know the, the bank or the foreign financial institution, you have a general idea. You may consider estimating the best you can. You may consider marking the box that says maximum account value unknown, but not filing it waiting for another piece of information is not acceptable for the IRS. And the fifth one, which is super important, if you only learned about the reporting in the current year 
and you have prior years non-compliance, don't just go off and file the current year or go back and mass file the forms without doing it properly because that's typically considered a quiet disclosure, okay? More importantly, if this is the first year you have to file, not an issue. If you have prior years non-compliance, don't just file the current year just because you learned about it in the current year. There's various programs, different people, different facts, different circumstances may qualify for, for one or more of the programs. If you're willful, VDP, uh, Voluntary Disclosure Program is pretty much uh, the only game in town. If you're non-willful, there's many more options available to streamline filing compliance procedures, domestic offshore, foreign offshore. There's also um, reasonable cause and the delinquency procedures depending on whether you have to amend returns or not, if you just have the FBAR, things of that nature. We have lots of free information available on our main website and all of our sub websites. You can always reach out and schedule a reduced fee initial consultation if you think it's appropriate. Again, my name is Sean Golding with Golding and Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.